Welcome to Motlow Theatre. Today I'm going to be giving you a tour of Powers Auditorium. I have the spelling there, E-R, which is different from what you might see on your schedule, which is T-H-E-A-T-R-E. -E. Um, when we talk about theatre as a subject, we spell it the French way, R-E. But when we're talking about a place, as we are today, we use E-R. Uh, just a little pretentious thing to annoy you. Uh, I have a picture here of the cast of Little Shop of Horrors, part of the cast of Little Shop of Horrors, uh, in rehearsal. So as I record this, uh, the coronavirus has shut down the campus, and so this is supplementary assignment for those in the class, but I'm hoping that I can use this to introduce Powers Auditorium uh, in semesters to come, maybe people who um, are just coming to Motlow for the first time, you can kind of see around Powers Auditorium and be introduced to the terminology that I tend to throw around not knowing people don't all speak the same language. So today we're going to speak some theater. So when we talk about the proscenium, we mean this big wooden arch. In an opera style theater, you often have this wooden arch that sort of um, beautifully frames the action and helps create distance between the house or where the audience sits and the actors on stage. It also is supposed to give some depth there and create this sort of TV. Uh, it can kind of a drawback. Um, you see how much space can be between the actors and the audience in a proscenium style theater. It really can lack intimacy if you're not careful, especially if you have actors working all the way on the back of the stage, upstage. Um, they can feel sort of distant from the audience. So that's one of the trouble with the style of theater, opera house theater we have with the proscenium arch. But um, Ours has been updated just in the last five years, and I'm really happy with the renovations and the way that they've changed our space. So over here you can see some of the set of the Little Shop of Horrors that we were working on when coronavirus shut us down. So if you say an actor is waiting in the wings, we mean the space um, off stage, right off stage. So an actor might enter between the grand drape, which is that red one, and the black leg here. That might be where the actor is waiting in the wings. Um, wings are often holding uh, costume changes, scenery that's about to come on stage, um, props, the prop table full of props that are about to come on stage. Wing space can refer um, to backstage left or backstage right, just right off waiting in the wings to come on stage. The apron is everything from the proscenium arch down to the lip of the stage. Our apron used to be all stairs, so these little stairs you see here used to happen all the way across the foot of the stage. And uh, during the renovation, like I said about five years ago, we renovated and put in these sound panels for acoustics. We had carpet on the wall that we ripped down, but we created an apron lip. So you can kind of see, if you're looking closely at the stage floor, where that apron hits and where we built it out. But I love having a little extra room, a little extra apron than we did five years ago. So if you go back and watch the archive the movies, the versions of different plays we've done in the library, you can see how it used to be with the carpet on the walls and the stairs all the way around. But the apron is this part of the stage down here, this part of the deck. Our auditorium holds our most important element of the theatrical experience, which is the audience. I watched the Stephen Colbert show religiously, and it was so weird, the one that my husband and I watched yesterday, because the mayor had just announced that you couldn't have more than, what, 500 people in a space, or maybe it's even like 100 people. And so he had to send away his audience and do his recording of his rehearsal uh, without an audience. And it was just so weird, because you're used to the thunderous applause, the laughs. Um, you know, there's a chance that we could even be performing Little Shop just as a recording. Recording. Um, but I hesitate to do that because such a big part of the magic of theater is the audience. Um, and so in our auditorium, uh, auditory being, you know, the hearing place, 
In our auditorium, we have our light booth up here, up above the actors' heads, I mean the audience's heads. Um, if you're on the second floor of O, if you, there's like just a door that you enter and walk in that where you don't have to climb up a ladder or anything. But if you want to get up here to the cats, where our moving lights have to be turned on, and to adjust our lighting instrumentation, you do have to take a ladder up there. So if you are afraid of heights, let me know. I won't put you on the lighting committee. Um, down here we have the sound booth, the sound board is back here, and the body mics are controlled through these stacks over here. So we have both our lighting control and our sound booth in the back of the house so that they can have the optimal audience experience and adjust and see from the audience's perspective. It's part of the reason why so often I, the show I'm directing, I run the light board because I like to be able to be in the audience. I like to be able to observe the audience and see what jokes land and what isn't working. I really get to feel like I have the best seat in the house if I'm up here behind old Rusty in the spotlight. So drapery really is one of the most expensive things that we have going on in the theater. Um, South Jackson's doing a fundraiser as we speak for their drapes to replace them, and it's thousands of dollars, and people come to me and they say, what, it's thousands of dollars to replace your drapes? It is, and I know the hard way. When I taught high school theater, I had a show choir group come in and cut off my drapes. So all drapes have these... Um, um, uh, I guess you would call them just strings holding on to the batten. I'm sure there's a fancy word for it, but I, I'm not, it's failing me. And instead of going through and untying all of those, they just cut my drapes and I had to replace them and it was horrible. Um, it, you know, the main purpose of the curtains is to mask the backstage to add to the magic and the allure. Uh, so when you customer number one is waiting to come on stage she stands behind this curtain and is not seen when she's not meant to be seen um, the there are other advantages to the curtains they are sound absorbent they're light absorbing um, they are heavy and they're also fly flame retardant so we have that going for us you know with all the lighting instrumentation theaters are traditionally places where fires can happen excuse me and that absorbing velour is very forgiving and safe and helps with noise control. So the leg, sorry to repeat the pictures here, but here we have the grand drape or the main red curtain. Here we have the concert curtain which can close all of the way. We call it the concert curtain because if you have an intimate concert, you know, just a piano recital or something, we can pull the piano out in front of the concert, close the concert and hide all of our scenery and stuff back behind it. Um, the leg is this little tiny curtain that's horizontal. It's It can't close the width of the whole stage. It's just a little small vertical drape, basically for actors to stand behind or move around backstage undetected. So our psych, this makes me sad. This is pod four, which can actually eat people. So after the second half of intermission, hope that we actually get to see it in action but it's not looking good. The cyclorama is our back um, white backdrop that we can splash color on. We have all of these what are called psych lights which are LED instruments. They don't get hot. They're beautiful beautiful technology I wish that we had for all of our lighting instruments. Uh, I have a computer program I can literally touch any color on the spectrum and they all automatically change colors as opposed to the other lighting instruments where I have to change out the gel or the film color in front of the light bulb. So our psych is psych uh, no not funny okay uh, that big white large backdrop which is meant to represent the sky in many cases but for a theatrical show like this one um, you can have dramatic light changes in Little Shop that help tell the story and set the mood, especially if you have a big man-eating plant. So a rigging or a fly system we kind of generically call everything that can be flown in and out um, to support the scenery. This is a batten, so the sort of meat and potatoes of our fly system are these battens. You can hang, like I said, the psych on it, that backdrop that can fly in and out, or you can hang lighting instruments on these battens. 
batten is a steel pipe. These can be very dangerous. Even a Broadway show recently, a lot of people were concussed and it was a very serious accident. So please be careful around the rigging system and don't operate it by yourself. The fly rail in our theater, if you're on stage, you turn to your right and walk all the way off stage and it is this rail right here. If you're going to operate, like bring in the psych, for example, you would go to 23 here. You can see this pulley system is not unlike sailing a ship. It's the same basic setup because sailors were often um, working in their off duty uh, in these theater houses seasonally. So. Um, the operator comes over to the fly rail here to operate the pulley system that is the fly system. We do have a few motorized flies in our setup. Uh, the main reason for that is just like in your teaching classrooms, you have that screen that can kind of slowly come down that your presentation media or your PowerPoint is thrown up onto through the projector system. We wanted to be able to have a motorized fly so that the average presenter when you know the theater's out of season, maybe in the summer, they could still have that bar come down like they're used to in a classroom rather than having to get into all this which most presenters don't feel comfortable and nor should they feel comfortable operating a fly system. So the motorized fly system was primarily installed in order to accommodate the screen uh, but we do have three battens that we can lower in and out and um, they're slow as molasses but very safe. Okay, we have this counterweight balance system that's part of the fly. Those bricks are what we use. Instead of sandbags, you may watch an old movie or have worked in a different theater that the counterweight is done on sandbags. I do apologize if you have ever stubbed your toe on one of these counterweight bricks down here. I do apologize. I've done it many, many times. I've dropped one on my toe. They are full-blown metal bricks, so they hurt. and. Um, but they are meant to create that counterbalance system so that when you unlock um, the pulley, it doesn't just the the batten doesn't just fly to the ground and bang and hit somebody on the head and create huge accidents. So the way that you work on these ropes, and once again, please don't without supervision. Um, at, when you're at the fly rail, they've got this handle here. You take this locking ring and you pull it up over the handle, then you pull the handle down. Now there is a pin back here that could be tightened, particularly if it's the psych or the back curtain. Sometimes I do tighten those pins because they are um, not a very heavy counterbalance system, so you don't want them to accidentally slip through a little bit. Um, but yeah, you just take this uh, locking ring off, pull the handle down, then you can pull this pulley just like you do opening or closing the curtain. And then when you've got it locked to where you want it to be, you pull the handle back up and slide the locking ring back into place. So anytime you're operating the rigging, you just want to um, call the movement. So you would say heads, batten coming on downstage. And that just helps the people who are in and around the theater to know something's coming down. You don't ever want to surprise someone with a steel bar, right? Especially a steel bar loaded with lighting instrumentation. So just please be very careful. If you hear heads in the theater, that means cover your head. And once again, you see that term deck again because of the sailor language. When we talk about the deck, we're talking about the stage floor that's visible to the audience. So um, a lot of decks are painted. A lot of decks might have motorized like a turntable in it or something. And so you have to install the deck for like a touring production or something. So that's what I mean when I say clear the deck not talking about a ship. So down to our last concept here, which if you've been in theater for any amount of time is a review for you. Um, when we talk about stage areas and notations. So a stage manager, um, we didn't have a stage manager for Little Shop, but in many cases, the stage manager is sort of the chief organizing right-hand man of the director. When the director moves on to their next gig, after the show opens, the stage manager becomes the director and they run the show. Uh, the stage manager keeps up with when the breaks should be, but probably one of the biggest responsibilities the stage manager has is to notate the actor's positions at any given time in the stage. Uh, in, during the production. So, for example, 
our person playing Audrey, Buffy Davis, lovely lady right here, I would say that the blocking area in the stage directions that she is in is down stage right. She's closest to the audience. She's not center. She's to the right of center. So that's where she is standing. Right back here we have Nikki Foshi. She is standing up stage left. So the stage manager at any given moment in the script should notate. Now if you're reading a script, you often see something like Mushnik in the stage directions. Mushnik moves DSL. So that is referring to these nine stage uh, areas. So we'll go over those real quick and then I will shut up and you can take your quiz. So upstage right means farthest away from the audience and to the actor's right. You may be looking at your screen like that's my left, but we do it to the actor's right. If the actor is facing the audience, they're far away from the audience and to their right. And you'll see that notated as you are. Right center, you might see uh, C, S, R is what I usually see, but sometimes you see R, C. And that just means that they're to the right of center. Downstage right is DSR usually. Oop, sorry. You would never see D. You would see DR. Sorry for the typo. Up center, farthest away from the audience. Now for the set you saw of Little Shop, we don't really even have that far upstage because we're basically performing where the concert curtain is and forward to the apron because we needed so much room backstage to operate. Um, so much of the puppet, the last pod uh, has to be, you know, people have to get eaten and there's all the mechanics of that we had to hide on the stage. So we don't really have a lot of upstage center. Center stage, a very powerful placement only to be um, stronger would be downstage center. Downstage center is probably the most intimate to the audience, going to endear you to the audience, um, and is best visibility. In our staging, we have to be really careful for Powers Auditorium and using far too far upstage because we do have a sort of limited sight lines as our audience kind of extends out on an angle. So if you have a person sitting um, all the way back by the ramp on this side, they can't really see what's going on upstage left. So our playing space in Powers Auditorium is really more of a triangle than a full-blown stage. And I apologize for that typo. That's supposed to say USR, USL, not USR. But you might see left of center or, US, or CSL, which is center stage left. Um, and I say that down left is a really intimate spot too. So we are so lucky to have kind of that narrator's corner where our urchins or our trio is able to have their stoop because it's a perfect place because they're sort of part of the audience. They're all knowing and they can kind of observe on the action of what's going on stage. So I really love our narrator's corner and our nice long ramp that we have that goes all the way out through the house that can create some really um, great teasing moments for our audience before people walk into light. But we did add that ramp, you know, in our latest upgrade, what, five years ago. And we do have some trouble lighting it, so we may have to do some pretty major upgrades to our lighting system to accommodate that big, nice um, ramp system we have. So like I said, this is probably a review for those of you who've been in theater a little while. Um, I say that I'm a little dyslexic, and so I still kind of have to put my... <laughs> think twice before when a director tells me to move stage right. I'm like, wait a minute, my right, your right? Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> it does take a minute to get used to. So if you will go into D2L and take a quick quiz over this terminology, hopefully it wasn't too much of a review to you. If you are new to Motlow Theater, welcome, and I hope this helps orient you to our space. Just a word about safety, please, please, please err on the side of caution. Never operate those big heavy light bars in that fly system unless you have a director or technical director there to help and um, always operate with caution. So as always, thank you for listening.